The Farne Islands are a group of islands off the coast of Northumberland, England. There are between 15 and 20 islands depending on the state of the tide. They are scattered about 1 or 1 half a euro 4 or 3 quarters miles from the mainland, divided into two groups, the inner group and the outer group. The main islands in the inner group are Inner Farne, Knox's Reef and the East and West Wide Oppens and the Megstone. The main islands in the outer group are Staple Island, the Brownsman, North and South Wamses, Big Haka and the Longstone. The two groups are separated by Staple Sound. The highest point, on Inner Farne, is 62 feet above mean sea level. History equals Monks and Hermits equals the earliest recorded inhabitants of the Farne Islands were various QDs, some connected with Lindisfarne. This followed the old Celtic Christian tradition of island hermitages, found in England, Ireland and Scotland. The islands are first recorded in 651, when they became home to St. Aidan, followed by St. Cuthbert. Cuthbert isolated himself on the islands until he was called to the bishopric of Lindisfarne, but after two years he returned to the solitude of the inner Farne and died there in 687, when St. Edward took up residence instead. Among other acts, St. Cuthbert introduced special laws in 676 protecting the Eider ducks, and other seabirds nesting on the islands. These are thought to be the earliest bird protection laws anywhere in the world. The islands were used by hermits intermittently from the 7th century. These included St. Bartholomew of Barn. The last hermit was Thomas de Melsonby, who died on the islands in 1246. A formal monastic cell of Benedictine monks was established on the island circa 1255. The cell was dependent on Durham Abbey, now Durham Cathedral. A very small cell, it was usually home to only two monks, although on occasion this rose as high as six. The cell was dissolved in 1536 as part of King Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. Following the dissolution of the monastic cell on the islands, the islands became the property of the dean and chapter of Durham Cathedral, who leased them to various tenants. In 1861 the islands were sold to Charles Thorpe, who was at the time Archdeacon of Durham. In 1894 the islands were bought by the industrialist William Armstrong, 1st Baron Armstrong. The islands are currently owned by the National Trust. Remains still exist of the 7th century anchorite cell used by St. Aidan and St. Cuthbert, as do the remains of a 14th century chapel associated with the cell. Known as St. Cuthbert's Chapel, the chapel it is described as a single cell building of four bays. The remains of a second chapel have been incorporated into a later building. Equals Grace Darling equals, the Farne Islands are associated with the story of Grace Darling and the wreck of the Four Farsha. Grace Darling was the daughter of Longstone Lighthouse Keeper, William Darling, and on September 7, 1838, at the age of 22 years, she and her father rescued nine people in a strong gale and thick fog from the wreck of the Forfarsha, which had run aground on Harkar Rock. The story of the rescue attracted extraordinary attention throughout Britain and made Grace Darling a heroine who has gone down in British folklore. Today, the islands have no permanent population, the only residents being National Trust assistant rangers during part of the year, they live in the old Peel Tower on the inner fun and the lighthouse cottage on the Brownsman in the outer group. The Peel Tower was built c. 1500, by Alfred Thomas Castle, prior of Durham. There is also a chapel set up on the side of St. Cuthbert's Oratory 600 years ago. It was restored in recent times with old material from a contaminated cathedral. Equals lighthouses equals. The first lighthouse was built on the islands in 1773. There are currently two lighthouses operated by Trinity House on the Farne Islands, Farne Lighthouse, built in 1811 and originally named Inner Farne Lighthouse, Longstone Lighthouse, built in 1826 and originally named Outer Farne Lighthouse. Former lighthouses on the islands include, Farne Island Lighthouse, Staple Island Lighthouse, Brownsman Lighthouse, a minor light was also established on the northwest of Farne between 1811 and 1910. All the operational lighthouses on the Farnes are now automatic and have no resident keepers, although in former years they did. The lighthouse is now maintained by Trinity House via their local lighthouse attendant, George Shile, who provides guided tours inside the lighthouse. 
ruins of some of the older lighthouses may be seen, for example on the Brownsman, where there are two. Before the lighthouses there were beacons on several of the islands. The prominent white streak on the cliff facing the mainland is often thought by visitors to be bird droppings, although many parts of the islands do exhibit this coloring, in this case it is the result of chalk deposits from the many years of spent calcium carbide from the lighthouse being thrown down the cliff. This calcium carbide was used to generate acetylene which was used as fuel for the light before electricity came. Ecology and Natural History In the warmer months the farms, an important wildlife habitat, are much visited by boat trips from sea houses. Local boats are licensed to land passengers on Inner Fan, Staple Island and the Longstone. Landing on other islands is prohibited to protect the wildlife. At the right time of year many puffins can be seen and these are very popular with visitors. On the Inner Fan, the Arctic terns nest close to the path and will attack visitors who come too close. Some of the islands also support a population of rabbits, which were introduced as a source of meat and have since gone wild. The rabbit and puffin populations use the same burrows at different times, the puffins being strong enough to evict the rabbits from the burrows during the nesting season. The islands also hold a notable colony of about 6,000 grey seals, with several hundred pups born every year in September or Euro November. Breeding birds on the farms include a total of 290 bird species have been recorded on the farms, including in the 1760s, an example of the now extinct Great Auk. On 28 a Euro May 29, 1979, an Aleutian tern, a rare term from the Aleutian Islands in the North Pacific Ocean, visited the farms. It was the first, and still the only, member of his species ever seen anywhere in Europe. It remains a complete mystery how it arrived here. A longer staying unusual visitor was Elsie the Lesser Crested Tern, who visited the farms every summer from 1984 to 1997. During that period, she raised several hybrid chicks, and attracted several thousand birders keen to see this species in Britain. Lesser Crested Terns normally nest on islands off the coast of Libya and migrate to West Africa for the winter. It is thought that Elsie took a wrong turn at the Straits of Gibraltar on spring migration. An Arctic tern from the farms, ringed as a chick not yet old enough to fly in summer 1982, reached Melbourne, Australia in October 1982, a sea journey of over 22,000 kilometres in just three months from fledging. This remains one of the longest distances travelled by any bird. One classic view of the farms, very popular with photographers, is that from the harbour at sea houses. However, they are closer to the mainland further up the road northwards towards Bamberg and excellent views may be seen from here, in the vicinity of the Monk's House Rocks, as well as from Bamberg Castle and Beach. Geology The farms are resistant igneous dolerite outcrops. These would originally have been connected to the mainland and surrounded by areas of less resistant limestone. Through a combination of erosion of the weaker surrounding rock, and sea level rise following the last ice age, the farms were left as islands. Because of the way the rock is fissured, dolerite forms strong columns. This gives the islands their steep, in places vertical cliffs, and the sea around the islands is scattered with stacks up to 66 feet high. Many of the small islands are bare rock, but the larger islands have a layer of clay subsoil and peat soil supporting vegetation. The rock strata slope slightly upwards to the south, giving the highest cliffs on the south and some beaches to the north. Shipwrecks and diving, as well as being popular with bird watchers, the Farne Islands are a popular scuba diving location, with a variety of sites suitable for all levels of diver. The islands appeal to divers for the seals and wrecks. The grey seal colony at the Farnes numbers about 5,000. They are curious and will often look in on divers in the water and are impressive to watch underwater. Hundreds of ships have been wrecked on the farms over the years, providing plenty for wreck divers to look at. Among them are, notable dive sites and wrecks, Chris Christensen, a Danish steamer that sank on February 16, 1915. She lies close into the reef off the south tip of Longstone, out of farms in about 98 to Euro 115 feet at. Abyssinia, a 453-foot German steamship that drove onto Knifestone, Outer Farms, 
on September 3, 1921. She lies in about 30 a Euro 66 feet at Britannia, a 740T, 210-foot British cargo passenger steamship that struck the Callers, Outer Farms, in thick fog on September 25, 1915. The wreckage lies between about 26 a Euro 98 feet at St. Andre was a 1120T French steamship carrying pig iron. On October 28, 1908 she hit the crumbstone and floated off to sink finally at Staple Island. She lies in about 56 a Euro 82 feet at. It is generally possible to dive at the farms regardless of wind direction. There is always shelter somewhere. Some dive locations even provide the opportunity to combine diving and bird watching, in particular the pinnacles, where guillemots can be found fishing at safety stop depth. References External links, information on the Farn Islands, sea houses and North Sunderland, Farn Islands information at the National Trust, Farn Islands access and information, John Witterig, Benedictine Hermit on Farn, Northumberland Coast a Euro area of outstanding natural beauty a Euro Northumberland Coast AONB site, lighthouse access and boat trips, diving around the Farn Islands.